was good to know. Now, the second part of this, how do you know what, he, what we're going to study now? I just uh, propose, suggest that we study some to understand when, you, when someone will ask you, what is the Quran? How can you describe the Quran? What is the story be be behind the Quran? Al Quran, the book of Quran. In literally speaking, or meaning the context of the Quran, the relationship between the Quran, why you studying Quran? Why the Prophet, what, he was the, what was the relation between the Quran and the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? All these, you, that's things that you have to know, you have to be aware of, right? Yeah. So today I want to propose a text suggesting that uh, you read this text. Let me pull it here. Do you, okay. So this is a text, do you see on the screen? Yes. I propose someone will start to reading. Yeah. Let me just, uh, we want to comprehensive, we want to read and understand the meaning together. We're going to discuss. Amina wanted to start reading. Good. Go ahead, Amina. Introduction to the Quran. Mm -hmm. All things are due to the Lord of God, and his blessings may be on Prophet Muhammad and his family. These reflections are not meant to explain the Quran. Rather, they are a collection of moments of clarity that a believer might have regarding a verse or a few verses of the Quran. Go ahead. Continue. Kind if of, the Quran yeah. were to be fully explained, the Prophet Muhammad would have been the foremost authority to explain it because it was revealed to him. However, the prophet to his companions what was appropriate for their time. He clarified all the responsibilities, duties, and rights of the people that result in reward if properly carried out or punishment if mishandled. So all the believers since the time of the prophet had equal and clear access to this knowledge. However, when it came to all the other matters regarding the creation and secret and treasures of the Quran, the Prophet shared from his knowledge as much as the minds of his time could in value. Okay, good. Now, what do we understand? What we what do we see through these lines, these texts? So, this they talking about clarifying all responsibilities, duties, rights of a Muslim that results in reward, resulting in reward, if properly carried out, or punishment if mishandled. Are we part of this? Are we called upon? These are duties, these are obligations, these are the rules. These are, these are guidelines. What do you say? What is your take? Yes. Yeah. What can you suggest? Well, how do you see this text affecting you? The reflection of what is what does it mean what the, these lines expose. You say the reflection are not meant to explain just the Quran. They are collection of moment of clarity. You should know what is your responsibility. What is your duty? What should you do? about this who are you who are you tell me that how do you consider yourself compared to like subhanahu wa ta'ala before allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are you just kids are you just uh, students here and there or are you just uh, you mean that uh, you 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 raise you raise muslims or you just go to college, you just go to high school. What are you? What is that? Are you Muslim? Yes. Do you feel that you're Muslim? Yes. yes. Do you feel that you have a duty, something to respect, something to yes. follow? You, do you yes. see that when you wake up and then go for five prayers during the day, do you feel that like you're obligated? This is mandatory for you to do every day. Good. So you need guidelines. Huh? You need guidelines. You have to follow the guidelines. You have to follow here these responsibilities they're talking about. 
these duties, you see rights of a Muslim, and all this done properly means what you what look at these two words reward. You see reward punishment in any time of your life, every aspect of your life at school, anywhere. They propose you, they give you something, some package of concept that if you do it well, you are rewarded. If you don't do it, you are punished somehow. Do you see that every day, even at school? If you don't pass the grade, you have a lower grade. If you pass, you do it. What is required? You have higher grade, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. So frankly, this is about life. This is about the conduct. This is about how, you know, the purpose of our life on earth, what, how we dealing with things, this kind of things. We are not here free at, in all aspects. Do you think that we just, we, we're just free? We can do whatever we want? No. No. We have to do whatever is right. right. Good. Right. Yes. Whatever mm. is right. Anything that is right that we should do, anything that is wrong, we should avoid to do. Good. So the second part, he's continuing to say that, uh, where were you? you? You went till value, right? The purpose of the revelation, who's going to start the reading? Uh, next. Who, who, who just read? It was Amina? Yes. Yeah. Okay, next, Yasin. Want to try this one? The purpose. Go ahead, Yasin. Okay. The yeah. purpose of the revolution, the revelation of the Quran, was not to reveal scientific ex explorations or to explain the secrets of creation. These matters remain hidden in its verses and are revealed in their proper time. It is when the scientific minds are active in search and study to such areas that God makes these verses shine with their true meaning. This makes each scientific revelation in the Quran more appropriate for its time and more impactful as it is delivered when the scientific minds are ready for it. The prophet let the explanation of the Quran, which is not related to matters of duty and religious law, to be revealed by time. Good, good. That's 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 great. So, do you know? Do you feel what they're trying to say here? You know, long time ago, sometimes you see some ayat, some verses of the Quran that was very uh, difficult to understand. It seems difficult because. He's trying to say that we are not at the time to understand because every verse should be should occur at the time how do we live our lifestyle is compatible with our lifestyle. Do you understand that concept? Mm -hmm. Yes. Now what we can explain, scientific scientists or scientific minded or Cartesian mind, what they what they can understand, they know now, they didn't know before. It was unclear. It was darkness because they said, "This I I don't know what this what's this, what what does this mean? It doesn't sound right. This is talking about over like uh, metaphysics or anything that uh, that surpass our mind. But now, time occurred when when they would they should they need they will apply the meaning of this ayah compatible to their work." In, in labs, in technology, you see the ayat of the Quran say, wow, God has said, Sayyidina Muhammad has said that long time and 1400 years ago. How come? Do we understand this now? He's, he said it long time ago, so this is the truth. Do you, do you see what I mean? Yes. So, so. That the, in the same line, along the same lines, we need to be mindful to the Quran, whatever the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said about this world happening, or we dealing with any matters, that will occur at the time, at the right time. So let's move on. Who's going to read from here? So this is uh, Yasin just read. Uh, Aisha is next. The Quran is God's word, and God calls its verse ayata. 
ayat. So you um, you know, do you understand that ayat means ayat means verses, right? Yes. Ayat yeah. means verse. Do you all understand that? Okay. Yes. Good. Sometimes sometimes they say it like they read it signs means signs. Ayat means verse. Ayat is in Arabic, and signs or verse in English or whatever, right? Yes. Good. Continue in the Arabic language. Which in the Arabic language means signs. It is the same word, ayat, that God used to describe his creation in the universe, such as the sun, stars, life, and all its forms, and so on. God Almighty says, in the creation of heavens and earth, in the alternation of the night and day, in the ships which sail the seas to people's benefit, in the water which God sent down from the sky by which which he brings the earth to walk, to life when it was dead and scattered about in, in the creatures of every kind in the varying directions of the winds and the clouds subservient subservient between heaven and earth. There are signs for people who use their intellect. That's good. You need to shake up your intellect. And you too, you need to shake up your intellect because here, this is an ayah of the Quran. This is an ayah of the Quran. That's how God talks. That's how God talks. That's how the Prophet, what did he reveal? The sound of the ayah. This is later in the Quran. You will learn or study this ayat in the creation of heavens and earth and the alternation of the night and day. So, because if you listen to it, you say, what, what they, are they talking about? This is the reality. This is realistic that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing whatever is contained in the universe. Do you agree? Now, when you're going to, later to your lab, you, you biology, maybe biology, you will find, I mean, you will learn, study story, uh, history, you will study biology, you will study computer sciences and all these matters how do you come to assemble and to understand the concept of gathering all these material together in your mind because you read you understand you see this is valuable this is is this is talking about something that should happen or already happened and we're dealing with at this time uh, well when i uh, we, we were speaking as we speak so in class sometime you go to lab uh, the teachers will explain you something it's kind of uh, you don't understand really the concept but you start realizing that this is happening they they explain you the importance of it that's what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing the creation of heaven who created the heaven who created the earth they they're talking about the alternation of the night and day all of a sudden you see it's become it's night time all of a sudden it's daytime so you need to go to astrology is a science called astrology so that uh, you will explain the, the you know the rotation between night and day or the sun and the moon all this is explained in the quran that's what they try to say here so let's move on these signs these are signs these are verses uh, so these signs are present both in god's creation and in his book which is the quran and with time one will explain and implement the other it is hard to understand now let me try to explain it now let's look into the meaning of the word quran who's gonna go is uh, aisha already Red Amina is next. Go ahead from here. Now let's look into the meaning of world of the word Quran. In the Arabic language, Quran is derived from the verb read, and it means the read or the recite. So let's stop there. What they wanna, they, they, what they're talking about here, they say that the, the, the word Quran, 
you you read you see quran let's go study quran what does i i i, I first ask you what quran mean he's trying to explain the word quran the relationship between the quran and the prophet and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so there is a book called quran but the arabic language quran is derived from the word from the verb read because read in arabic means qara'a qara'a means read and the word is quran the act of reading when you read they say the the reading means quran that's how we say it. the read or the recited when we recite is qara'a too when we recite so the use of the word quran is restricted to god's revelation to his prophet muhammad for the purpose of guidance and proof when we he means by that that when we and when we hear the word quran al quran this is we have to understand that this is a source of guidance of a proof of revelation our our way of life the islamic way all these is contained in the quran is included in the quran which make us obliged to read and study the quran more profoundly right do you agree yeah. okay so god also refers to the quran as a book when you have a book of quran the quranic book is our source of go of guidance whatever we want to we want to learn or study in our life what is whatever is not clear in any behaviors we need to read quran we will find the explanation of any situation of this in this life into the quran into that book they're talking about because that's the only book of guidance that's never changed right the quran then is always preserved in the mind of those who memorize it so i urge you to memorize the quran so when you memorize the quran you will have an add value so people around you will respect you more your parents gonna be proud of you your relative anyone we would love you more because you say that this these kids this is someone this is a sign of hope we see you as someone who is learned a learned scholar you're going to school you're going to the your you're, you're going to college you come back on your way around your friend at the mosque anywhere they respect you that's because they know that you're holding the quran in your mind you memorize it which is very important so strive hard to know to memorize the quran inshallah put this book the quran into your breast will you promise that yes inshallah it will happen right yes. yeah Mashallah. god also refers to the quran as a book the quran is always preserved in the mind of those who memorize it and on the pages of the holy text so when relating to the revelation in its read form it is called the quran we say that already and when relating to it in its written form it's called the book so the written book and the recited quran all these are the same when you say quran that means you're reciting it when you say book of the quran the kitab al mushaf that means you writing the book is written because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was talking about Quran, he didn't write it down. He was talking, he was reciting it. Any ayah that come upon him from sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from Jibril, the messenger, Jibril, the angel Jibril. So the Prophet would repeat it, would say it to the crowd, to the to these companions. So it was in a written form. But now it's you know later on they wanted to preserve because this is a source of value that's why they start writing on papers you know on bones and everything that uh, the sira has revealed so that's why now on 
nowadays we see the book compiled book which is our source of guidance our way of life that's our reference who's gonna go here from historical this is uh next is fatima i think fatima yeah. you want to read from here historically the quran was being collected and written down in its book form two rules were in implemented for writing down each verse. The first rule required that two people who had memorized the verse be present, and the second rule required that the verse was also found written down by one of the prophet's companion, companions. These two conditions were met for each and every verse in the Quran except for one. This one verse was found written down, however, it was only memorized by one companion. So according to the rule, the verse should have been excluded from the book. Okay. Do I continue? Continue. But here comes an incident that shows the wisdom and mercy of God Almighty. This particular verse was memorized by a man uh, named... Uh, uh, Fatima, hold, hold on a moment. Thank you. I just wanted to bring back this before you get lost here so they say the 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 history historically the quran was being collected though you should understand how at in the first place how was the quran start being recorded or written this is how you just said it right are you with me are you following so this was being collected and written down in its book form then two rules from there two rules were implemented for writing down each verse one is the first rule required that two people who have memorized the verse be present why because of because of transparency right yes this is yeah. because of transparency because people you cannot just uh, coming from anywhere and say okay the, this is the verse of the quran the prophet said this and i was there right no two people has to when one is writing the other one is observing or looking at him while he's writing so he makes sure they under, understand or they heard they because they heard the same verses this the other guy is here watching him writing so Sam, this is correct i agree right good so the first rule requires the two people who have memorized the verse be present and the second rule the second rules require that the verse was also found written down by one of the prophet's companions do you understand this passage do you understand yeah the second rule required that the verse was also found written down by one of the prophet's companions in general what they're trying to say they needed a witness they needed to, because this is so important they need a witness like you say in finance there's a treasurer collecting this money and and stuff but it must be a controller who controls the numbers it cannot be someone who go into the bank back and forth and saying okay this is the I just this is only me who knows what is in the bank what the number they need to be a controller so to witness that to attest that the, what he's saying is true so what he's saying is true which means that in the quran there is a control they all agree that this is the source of transparent this quran is transparent we cannot fool people this is the words from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then by the time that you reading you are reading the quran it should give you this attitude of being very transparent very trustworthy right you need to say the truth you always have to say the truth whatever in whatever situation that they were trying to teach here so now there is one verse he's saying that there is one verse written down that was one verse who didn't have a witness that verse there was no witness present however it was only memorized by one companion 
this is very important to understand, to know the relationship between how you could treat your Prophet So according to the rules, this verse should have been excluded from the book. But who's going to continue? Is uh, Muhammad? Good. From here. Uh, but here comes an incident that shows the wisdom and mercy of Almighty. This particular verse is memorized by a man named Khuzayma and no one else. Okay. The scribe was writing down the Quran. Remember that the, remember that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Whenever Khuzayma testified for it, just suffice. The Prophet had given Khuzayma's testimony. Khuzayma's testimony, the weight of two testimonies. This was based on an event that happened while the Prophet, peace be upon him, was alive. The, the okay. Prophet had borrowed money from a man and then repaid him the debt. After some time, the man came back to the Prophet asking for his money back. The Prophet told the man that he had already repaid him and the debt in full. So this man asked the Prophet to bring forward a witness that saw the transaction. However, no one was with the Prophet at the time. He repaid the debt. This is when Khuzayma came forward and said, I was present when the Prophet repaid you the money. After the man left, the Prophet turned to Khuzayma and said, I know you were not present when I repaid you the debt. No one was there. How could you say that, that you were with me? Khuzayma looked at the Prophet and said, How can I believe you in all the revelations? He you brought from the heavens, and then disbelieve you about a few points. Went through his wisdom, so that the Prophet, who was the most honest and truthful man he knew, could not be dishonest about, about a small worldly matter, and he was honest in delivering God's message. On the Prophet of Hosea's deep understanding and belief, he was very pleased and said, Whoever Hosea testified for it should suffice. Good. Good. Allahu Akbar. This is the, 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 the this is a divine statement. This is the a statement that that shakes your heart. Right? Yes. Why? Because it's part of Iman that you believe to your Prophet. You believe in your Prophet. That's a part of Iman. You know this statement, Khuzayma, was, was he there while the trans transaction occurred? No, he just said it. But he said, how come we believe in you, Prophet Muhammad? At the time when you reveal to us what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has delivered upon us, his creation, which is the Quran. We believe the entire Quran. Now, how come we don't, we're not going to believe you? Whatever you say, we believe that, right? Yes. It's the same statement when you remember Isra al-Mi'raj. Isra and Miraj, do you know Isra and Miraj? The night, the night journey. They're talking about the night journey when the Prophet Sallallahu went to the, up to the seven skies. The seven skies and uh, over there, what was revealed to the Prophet when he went to the night journey? When we undertook the night journey, what happened in there? He received the prayer. Yeah. That's where he received the prayer, right? Yes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when he came back to Mecca, what did these uh, hypocrites say around him? The sheriff, like Abu Jahl and the people of Quraysh. They say, that's a lie. That's not true. Ma'azallah. They say, that's not true. What did Abu Bakr Sadiq say? He said, the prophet, I am, I am the first who is going to believe in you. I believe whatever you say. As I believed the first time you told me that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent you down to, to teach his message, which is the Quran. Do you get that? Yes. Because Abu Bakr said, the first time I believed in you, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent Jibreel to you to reveal his message, he revealed his message to upon to you. Now you're gonna teach human being, the universe between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what Allah wanted, that Allah wanted from us to worship him. All this content in the Quran. I believe to the revelation, I believe to the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the first place. Now that's why I'm gonna I'm ne never gonna doubt on just anything you say to me. So when you come from this trip, 
the night journey, the first time, as I believe you the first time, this is the same as I'm believing you now. There would be no difference, inshallah. That's, was, that was the statement of Abu Bakr. As we read here, Khuzayma, this is the same statement. Do you agree, Mami? Don't you agree? Yes. Yes. Mashallah. So we are obliged to believe in the Prophet, sallam, to believe in whatever he said, to believe in his hadith, whatever he revealed, how he wanted us to behave, be, be, and then follow his footsteps in order to gain Jannah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is all about Islam. That's our guidelines, our moral guidance. This is a seed of moral guidance that we should respect and follow. Don't you agree? Yes. yes. Did the text yes. easy to understand? Or you well, was it how, how did you find this text? Is it was to read, to understand? Yes. To read? Right? Is it a little bit yeah, it's worse to I mean, it's worth to read. No, no, it's worse to read. It's worse to read. You know what? This is part of your life. And then we hope in you. You are our future. That could explain really the Quran, that would explain really Islam, that would teach to your fellow, to anyone who's asking about Islam. Like you explained it in your uh, at a school, anywhere in the street, what is your religion about? You need to be able to explain these concepts. So I urge you to study more the Quran, the background story, the history, anything from the Prophet Sallallahu May Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala help you and help us be victorious in this matter. Inshallah, Subhanahu Wa Taala. May Allah protect us from all that is happening around us. All they're talking about, may Allah protect us, inshallah. So, so that preserve us in all calamities. And then may we see you, inshallah, next Saturday. Have a good weekend. We pray for you. Don't forget to pray for us too, inshallah. Bismillahi lazi la yadurru ma'asmihi shay'un lardi wala fi sama'i. Amin. 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 Who, with his name, nothing can cause harm in the earth nor in the heaven. Amen. And he is the all hearing, the all knowing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protest. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.